Hello everyone and welcome to the Italian Kazuki podcast. My name is Katie. This is episode 83 and today is Wednesday, August 14th, 2019. Thank you so much whether you are a new or returning viewer. I'm so glad you're able to join me. You can find me across social media as Italian Kazuki. Most active locations of course being Instagram and kind of Facebook. Most all of my photos from Instagram get pushed to Facebook. So depending on your social media of choice, that's where you can find me. Um, yeah, it's been a couple weeks since I actually like recorded. We ended up in Edson Lot. Well, we knew we were going to be up in Edson. It's not like this was a surprise. <laughs> but uh, we went up to Ed Edson last week for my husband's best friend's wedding. Um, Dallas was the best man in the wedding. So we were up there and um, it was midweek wedding. It was a Thursday wedding. So we went up on the Wednesday to help set up. And then Thursday was the actual wedding. And then Friday, we helped with the teardown and then drove home. And Edson is not a short drive from Cochrane. Edson is about a five and a half hour to five and a half to six hour drive for us. So, needless to say, there wasn't a lot of podcast recording going on. Not even in informal vlogs, simply because I was out of energy. <laughs> I did succeed. Um, in my finished my only finished object this week is the blanket um i finished it i finished it on time i even got it wrapped i was absolutely spectacularly amazed now on wednesday morning we left ridiculously early so i was sitting at the truck at 6 30 in the morning weaving it ends on this blanket and uh i ended up cheating a little bit in my like uh connection of the dots i ended up actually just tying them together now these are good enough friends that if anything happens to it, I can um, do repairs on it quite easily. So I'm not actually that concerned about it. Well, though, I'm a little bit concerned about it, but I'm not super concerned. So, <laughs> um, but it's done, it's finished, it's off my plate, which means that I've actually got new projects on the needles, even though I know I've got a ton of projects on the needles, I could be knitting instead. But I've been talking about this one for a really long time. And so I wanted to start working on it. It's no surprise if you do follow me on social media. Um, I've been talk chatting about it up there and talking it up because I really like this project. But I am knitting the When You're Fast Asleep Shawl by Jessica Anderson. And I'm knitting it out of Ancient Arts Yarns Merino Singles in their Antique and Dusty Rose colorway. And I am absolutely loving it. I don't know why or how, but I've been able to crank this out ridiculously fast um because I literally started this on I think I started on Sunday last week so before the wedding because the blanket actually had to dry a bit um yeah and so this is the amount of work I've gotten done in about 10 days I'm actually on the second lace panel so there's two lace panels well, there's stockinette, a lace panel, and then stockinette, and then a lace panel. And so I'm in about a third of the way into the next lace panel. It's only 11 row repeat, so, but I'm really liking it. Um, the original design was designed with the blues kind of of the Florida castle, but these colors, um, the Cinderella's castle in Tokyo Disneyland is actually more pink. And so these colors really evoked Tokyo Disney Castle for me and I couldn't couldn't not um, obviously pink is definitely more my color um, but I think I should have this actually done for October it's gonna look gorgeous once it gets blocked out um, I'm really excited about how this is like I'm not alternating skeins I'm really excited with how this is pooling everywhere um, so yeah, I should actually, if I can get a good push on it this week, I might even have it finished for next week. Do not hold me to that. I am up to about, I'm just over 300 stitches on the needles right now. So who knows? Something will happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was the major project this week after the blanket. And then because I have a serious case of starditis and there was a sale on it, I picked up the April tank top pattern by Carolyn Day. Hey, you can see my camera in that. There we go, now you can't. 
um, because it has this like really cute lace detail up at the top, which is repeated down at the bottom as well. But um, I need more summer knitwear, and this seems to fit the bill exactly. It's a little bit more high necked in the front, and then it's a long, almost tunic length, um, and it only calls for just over 800 yards um, for my size, which is fantastic. And I am knitting that out of uh, Hedgehog. I, so yeah, I went stash diving. These aren't new. Um, it was actually one of the challenges I had was to figure out what yarns I wanted to use. And these were two single skeins in my stash. Um, so the Hedgehog is the Hedgehog Fiber Sock Yarn in Fool's Gold. It's a 90% Superwash Merino, 10% Nylon. It is a light fingering weight. 100 grams is 400 meters. Um, and this was part of my fiber share package from last year. And then I'm going to pair it with King Fiber in Nectar with, out of their soft and springy 100% superwash merino base. Gorgeous pink with some flecks of like green in it. And this is 100 grams is 365 yards. So I did swatch with both of them um, because I was originally going to do, so I'm going to do the lace um, in the Hedgehog because I've got more yardage of it and then I'll switch to doing stripes with the pink. Um, so when I swatched I was originally going to do just single rows of color but it turned out nicer when I actually did two rows of color so it's mostly worked back and forth in the round so it won't be that big of deal to do either but I thought yeah no two rows looked better. So I really do want to get this also done for Florida in October. I don't know if it will happen because once I finish the shawl, I need to go back to my Hito Fude because I have to get that finished. And I really do want that actually for Knit City too uh, because I feel like it'll be a really nice piece to wear there as well as the shawl actually. So those will be the two that I focus on. But I've got two weeks in between <laughs> Knit City and uh, Disney. So obviously I'll be able to finish this too. Actually, I might be able to because basically once the lace is done, it's just stocking that body pretty much. So we'll find out. Um, the other thing that I've had to do is um, it's hunker down season, which means that there's a lot of sewing going on. I actually have a significant number of wholesale orders to complete right now. And so that's my big focus. But of course, I also need to focus in for Knit City orders or well, Knit City stock. So if you guys have any requests, let me know. I'm more than happy to try and accommodate. I'm going to be focusing on filling in some tote bag gaps right now and hopefully some more purses as well. Fingers crossed. You never know. Um, which means that I am actually listening to quite a few audiobooks. Now, I think I chatted about it last time, but I finished um, A Wicked Thing by Rhiannon Thomas and I'll be listening to the sequel to that as well. It's a Sleeping Beauty rewrite. Um, it wasn't bad. It's definitely young adult, slightly dystopian, um, but that's okay. And then I listened right straight back to back while I was doing a lot of the finishing of the crochet. I did The Philosopher's Flight and The Philosopher's War by Tom Miller. Definitely a um, older teen adult series. It deals with World War One in very graphic or well fairly graphic detail and uh, but it's kind of like an alternative universe where there is uh, magic and so it was I really liked it. I really enjoy it. Well I listened to them back to back so there was that and then over this weekend I read actually the Bone Witch Shadow Glass. The Shadow Glass. Anyway, it was the last book in the Bone Witch Trilogy by Rin Ringe Peckel, um, which I've been waiting for, and I don't know. It kind of fell flat for me, um, especially because like the series had been building up to this massive reveal, and the reveal was really cool, but um, it felt like the end was rushed and I don't know why. It just kind of, yeah, it fell flat. And um, there's a couple things about it that I'm just kind of like, eh, it could have been handled better, but it's done now. Um, 
And then the other one that I'm listening to right now is by Maggie Steffvader. It's all the Crooked Saints. Um, Maggie Steffvader actually wrote the Raven Boys Quartet, which I really enjoyed and I really suggest. Um, it's a young adult, but it's a uh, male protagonist focused and it's quest story. So that's really fun. Um, it's not a typical like YA love triangle, only romance or romantic comedy sort of thing, which is really refreshing in the YA. Um, genre yeah it's why is a genre <laughs> kind of like i guess category slash new adult kind of thing they're all older teen as well um but this one is dealing with i would put this one definitely closer to like high school and adult reading um nothing explicit so far i don't know i'm only about halfway through but it's um dealing with like saints and miracles which is a really interesting concept to me um and so I'm really enjoying that. That's the current audiobook that I'm listening to while I put my head down and start sewing. So, um, what else have we done? I don't know. Like, honestly, that blanket took up a lot of time. Um, so I didn't do anything really exciting the week that Dallas was away. And then last week was the wedding. Um, we have been watching a lot of Disney films recently because I find that you pick up a lot of stuff at the parks when you've watched the films, like music and like little hints in storefronts and all of this. It's really fun. And Dallas and I have done it in the past, but my niece and my mother-in-law haven't have either not seen the movies recently or not seen them at all. Um, so we're going through and we're basically we're doing chronological order as much as we can, um, mostly sticking to the classics of what you think of when you think of Disney. So like Cinderella and this week it's going to be Peter Pan and Lady and the Tramp, those are the next two on the list. Um, but Dallas and I actually, uh, I remembered that the library loans DVDs. So because mostly, <clears throat> excuse me, I've mostly been collecting them myself as they've been released and I'll probably still do this. But uh, it was stuff like Saludos Amigos and The Three Caballeros, which I had never seen, but, and they're not a massive presence at Disney World, but I think in terms of Disney history, they're really important. Um, and they weren't bad. Like some of some of the older films, I'm, I'm kind of sitting there like, who was in the like creative council, creative like meeting that was like, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, and there's still a few moments like that in Three Caballeros, but like, I find that the, for me, at least, the princess movies are definitely classics because they're classics, and uh, there's a good reason for that, too. Um, so yeah, so we are going through and doing that. What was the other one we watched? So we watched those two, and honestly, I haven't watched a lot with just Donald as like the protagonist. Realistically, I haven't watched a lot with just Mickey as the protagonist as well, so I need to track down some of the shorts that were released at that in that time period, too. Um, and then we watched... Uh, Oh goodness, Ichabod and Mr. Toad, and I know I've seen those previously, but it's been a really long time. Um, now Mr. Toad's Wild Ride does not exist in Florida anymore, it exists in Disneyland still though, so that was really fun to watch. Um, knowing what I knew about the ride and everything like that, and then that one also included Fun and Fancy Free, which is the more or less the retelling of Jack and the Beanstalk with Mickey, Goofy, and Donald. So, and that one was really funny because Donald just absolutely loses his mind consistently and it's hilarious. <laughs> um, so that's kind of what the fun stuff has been. Obviously we went up to Edson, the wedding was really good. Um, took a lot more to recover from than either of us anticipated. I don't know why. We're both really tired after it. But I think that's just the kind of theme of the summer with the gloom and everything like that too. It's a little bit harder to like get energy levels going uh, because there hasn't been a lot of sun. Although it was really nice. We were up there um, and it was like fogged in and cloudy and like not raining. But everything was going to get damp when you were out and about. It was an outdoor ceremony. If it had been absolutely pouring, they did have an alternative. But... Um, Literally, it was fogged in all morning and then about 20 minutes before the ceremony actually happened and the bride exited, the sun just came out. Perfect weather. Um, 
Now we all were super unprepared and didn't have sunscreen on or anything like that, so I burnt. But um, couldn't have asked for better weather for the ceremony, and then it didn't start raining until like after the reception, so that's pretty fantastic. Um, yeah, and that's realistically it. It was a really long drive up, really long drive back. Watched some Disney movies, got lots of knitting done, so I'm quite happy with that. And this is going to be a fairly short and sweet episode, so that you can head out and do your own crafting. So I will. There is nothing interrupting. Uh, podcast next week so I will chat with you all next Wednesday and I hope you have a fantastic week of crafting and I will see you soon. Bye guys!